it's the pajama party. Woo, -woo. the pajama party. Say woo, woo, the pajama party. It's the pajama party. Hey, sing it with me now. It's the pajama party. Hey. Hey, sing it with me now. It's the pajama party. <laughs> Welcome back, gang. Welcome back, Dandelions, to the place to be a pajama party where we keep saying we're going to bring you the woman of the week and we keep forgetting. That is just my way to go ahead and put it out there quick, fast, in a hurry so I don't feel so bad. I don't know, y'all. I always leave a section in my notes that say woman of the week. I do my notes the week before. I literally come back the day of and I'm like, I did not finish my notes. So we're gonna just pray and believe that it's gonna be better this time, next time. So, uh-huh. I my serious face on and just say that you need to be careful when you tell people about your dreams, what it is you hope for in life, what it is you hope to accomplish with certain people, you know, you really have to be careful who you give your headspace and heart to because not everybody is going to agree with you and vibe with you. And a lot of times people can't see the vision because it's your vision. It's not theirs to see. It is yours to see. Okay. And if the Lord gave it to you, it is because he wants you to utilize it and do something with it. He didn't give it to you so you could go and ask five people if it's okay and then do it. He gave you the vision. So yes, as scary as it is, you just need to do it anyway, because who knows what that can open up for you, even if it's just a little bit more boldness or courage. And trust me, that is something I needed to hear for myself. So it is a learning process for the both of us. But just really take your time. You can't ever, I feel like sometimes, you know, you can't ever really know a person, but if you spend a lot of time with them, you should get to know them. You know, it takes time for anything you want to do in life, including investing in people. And me and Sugar Cookie, we've been rocking it strong for nine years. Time. Time that I would not want to spend with anybody else. She's the greatest friend I could ever hope for and want. So, you know, if anything, she has taught me that it, time really does matter because even with the other friends that I have lost, we've only been friends for an allotted amount of time. But I think that they all assume that everybody should be like sugar cookie. And it's not like that. Like she, you know, when you have a best friend, they have earned the rights to your heart because they have put in equity with you sweat equity you know my mom is the only other person outside of sugar cookie who knows me back and forth and that's because once again sweat equity the bonds the lessons we've learned together the advice shared and given the situations we've faced and how we've learned to still love each other and see the best in each other even when times were rocky and so not everybody's gonna be your best friend and that's okay because not everybody needs to be your best friend and to walk in this world and believe that everybody wants to be your best friend or care for you, this that is not true. So you need to get out of that notion that you will have a lot of friends because you will not. And honestly, that is great. But having associates and having people around you, you know, and talking and laughing with people, that's great. But you don't need to try to fill up a book of people who share your secrets. Be careful with that. So... Sit in the corner with me. I wanted to ask y'all, have you ever been like the only black in a place or like only minority in a place? So we took my niece last Monday to uh, this local pool here for Memorial Day. Now where we live at, um, it is very questionable. They are not, they are much friendlier up here than where I come from, but sometimes there's still not a lot of like colored people when you go out. I mean, it's getting better. Slowly it's getting better. But when we went to the the pool that day, it was a bunch of Caucasians and they were looking at us like they ain't ever seen black people before in their life. Some of them just looked thrilled. Other ones looked like they was just really just trying to figure us out. And you know, I was sitting here like, I hate 
every bit of this all the the lifeguards were white and i don't know why but that stressed me out even more like this little black baby star drowning and i really i'm telling y'all i'm working on getting better at it i really am trying but i gotta get it out i gotta get it out so i can move on and i love white people do not come for me okay i love white people and I just it's just a lot that's been happening that's been happening here that triggers my senses and makes me nervous and so we went and sat down you know people were nice but like my mom was like side eyeing me so I know like I had my fro out y'all last weekend yeah you saw the videos it was flipping and so I know that that was a main attraction right there and then Pooh my niece she's just so stinking cute like I had to double hawk watch her because I had a guy tell us like the day before, aren't you a cute young thing? No, she is not. Keep your eyes off of her. Like, ew. So yeah, it was a, it was just stressful at first, but then slowly, like more blacks started coming. There was, you know, uh, some Asians there, like an Asian family there. There was some his, some Latinas out there, Latinos. It was nice. It was a nice little mix that was whipping up in there. But at first, it was just us and. I was just like, this is stressful because if anything pop off, it is two black women and one black baby. And then y'all, there was this one woman who, and I just, she, first of all, I did not have her hair done, which how you got the house is your own business lady. But just how she presented herself, I don't ever want to be in a place of life where I just walk out the house and look at any kind of way, okay? And this needs to be a harsh truth for somebody to hear. Yes, it is your body and you wear what you want to wear. But when you go out in public, we are watching you, okay? We are seeing you. And how I see you dress up is how you tell me how you feel about yourself. So if you come out the house looking like that, I'm going to assume that you don't feel too great about yourself because ain't no way. Ain't no way I ever would. And then the kid that she had, the lifeguard blew the whistle and he was like, beep, walk. The kid was still running. He goes, beep, beep, tell him he needs to walk. And she was just like... And walked off which right don't let the white man tell you what to do but your kid need to walk we are on in the pool like it is a hazard not only that but even my niece got the whistle blew on her because she kept diving into the pool and they were like you can't do that sweetie and i was just like oh poo but so yeah i just want to have you ever been the only black in anything the only hispanic in anything the only asian in anything let me know and like even I don't know I you know what I don't know if I would accept a white person telling me that they were in a room full of black people and they were scared like and I don't know like that could be a thing but to me that just feels racist and I don't know where that is stemming from but it does um but I was gonna say I I when I was in college I remember distinctly I did this uh internship where I had to go sing at this Presbyterian church and I hated every bit of it because it was me and there it was my friend Israel and he is a Hispanic and so he would not show up half the time and it would just be me and i'm sitting there and i remember one time i looked at this like older chinese lady and she like grabbed her purse and like held it to her and i'm like i'm in a choir stand what am i gonna do to you and why do you think i want your money lady i got my own okay like how you think i got here but apparently when I tried to explain it to my director how I was feeling about the incident, she goes, well, they have another black service after that. And I'm like, so what? They got a fully black service and a fully white service. And you're going to sit here and tell me because they have a fully black service that I am supposed to feel comforted by this, which I did not. It, it had the opposite effect. Okay. So what ever how you feel about that if you've ever experienced it i want to know the tea if you've been through it because it it was an experience but i want to go back there and i want to wear my bathing suit you know and get in the water because they had this like little whirlpool effect and like i said everybody was really friendly don't get me wrong there were some friendly people there there was one man i thought he was gonna crack his neck because like he was looking like this and when i like turned to look at him he went and I was just like, you're going to break it. She going to know you was looking because you about to break your neck. All right. So we going to fake it till we make it. So I'm going to tell y'all this story. 
And it, oh, when I was thinking about it, I cringed for myself and I have a little bit of secondhand embarrassment, but we just gonna talk about it anyways. Um, I told these girls in high school, or was it middle school? I think it was, it was middle school going into high school. Yes. I was telling these girls that I was dating Taylor Lautner and my friend was dating Robert Patterson. And no, no, no. Or I think it was something like I was dating, I named them different. Taylor Lautner was named Jules and uh, Robert Patterson was, no, Taylor Lautner was named Fuego and uh, Robert Patterson was named Jules. And I made up this story because I used to get bullied and teased a lot about like, you know, not having no boyfriend and like not doing the act of sin. And I used to be feeling really guilty and convicted about the fact that I didn't live such lives. And so I started lying to them, telling them that I met these dudes, that they live in Lufkin and that, you know, ironically enough they believed me like I didn't even have photos but I was telling them how like you know I was liking one and the other one was trying to get me to be with him and I think I had like lost my virginity to Jules and like uh Fuego was really upset about it and you know like he wanted me back y'all just this wild crazy story and the two main characters was Taylor Lautner and Robert Patterson and and I remember because it was when Twilight was going on and I was such a fan of the the dang movie and even had my mom going to the movie theater like Jasper it is such a small town but when Twilight hit it was packed out. Everybody was in the theaters to see Twilight. It was probably like one of the only movie events I can ever count that was packed out like that. And I loved every moment of it. The second one was when we went to go see My Hero last year and it was packed out. And my mom couldn't believe like that adults were sitting in this anime movie. Yes, we were. But so I lied to them about it. And one girl, she was like, she, I was telling her I was a virgin and she was like, no, you're not. And I was like, yeah, I am, dude. Like, I wouldn't need to lie about that. She was like, well, what about Jules? You said that you was with Jules. And I was like, and apparently they had spread this story, y'all, to like so many people in middle school, like that who we were going to high school with. So that led me to believe that like a lot of people assumed more about me and that was purely my fault because I lied about this and they took it and ran. It came from my mouth, but I didn't have no pictures. I didn't have no voice audio, no nothing. And this is kind of like when cell phones and stuff were relatively still new, you know, like kids really didn't have cell phones and stuff. So I mean, it's not like they could really refute it because we didn't have as much as we do now. Like we were still rocking MySpace barely and Facebook, you know? And I mean, it even got worse than that because I remember one year I lied to everybody and told them that Zelo from BAP was my boyfriend. And I held on to that lie for the longest. I was like, yeah, this is my boyfriend. His name is Zelo. <laughs> But yes, I had set him as my wallpaper. I ooh, I hope I have the picture. It was when he had his curly hair. But yeah, I set him as my wallpaper and paper. And everybody would be like, who is that? I'm like, that's my boyfriend. Like, that's my baby. You know, I said a line. And I don't even know why nobody ever called me out and was like, you full of it. But they just believed it. And I would show my cousin like, I'm, mm -mm, this is K-pop. And I showed her because she was the only one accepting of K-pop. And I was like, mm, this is an idol. I lied to them. But you know that I lied to them. They don't know, but you know. So, yes, I faked a lot of relationships. I faked the first time because they really believed that it happened. Y'all, and the story was good. I don't know why they would have even believed the story. How am I just, Lufkin is like an hour away from my hometown, hour and a half. How am I, a girl who does not have a driver's license, gonna just miraculously get up and get into Lufkin? And I think I told him something like, I would go see my friend in Lufkin, but I didn't even have a name for her. They never saw us together at any events. I never talked about her in any posts. 
I don't know. Or maybe they just wanted me to believe that they believed me and they knew all along that I was lying. It could be either or, but that was my story then. And I stuck with it until I was ready to reveal that like it was not true. And even a few years later, I ended up going back home and I worked at this grocery store with one of the girls I told the lie to. And I we ended up being pretty cool. Like we was pretty cool. We talked to each other for a little bit. Um before we parted ways again, but I just never said nothing about it. She seemed to let it go, so I let it go, and I just let that be the truth that was unspoken. So, yeah, I y'all, I don't know. I just wanted to be accepted. I wanted them to think I was cool. All that stuff that didn't matter, I was looking for, it, and that was the result of it. And so, yeah, j just, as always, be careful with the lies you tell, with the life you're gonna lead. Okay, be careful with the people you're gonna keep in your life, all right? Because like I say, that goes back to keeping it covered. I thought that they weren't gonna expose me. And I've had it done even on like, when I used to role play, I had this friend named, I'm not gonna name her, because we don't do names here. I had this friend named BB. And one day, mm, so people have been bullying me online. So I created a profile and then two other fake profiles. And I had all of them. Um, please don't listen to this. I had all three of my characters faking like they were writing out a script or role playing the action of like having a threesome. And I don't know why. I don't know why. I don't know why I did it. I don't know why I did it. It was first. I don't even know why I told her that I did it because she went back and told everybody. And literally in the midst of me finishing off a scene, somebody was like, girl, you need to stop lying because you know this yourself anyway. <laughs> the shame in my heart and even admitting it and replaying that, that is trigger. Like that is trigger central because I was like, who told? I told one person and she went back and told everybody <laughs> so everybody that was bullying me was like you lying ain't no way she out here doing this and this person was like yeah I got proof I was told about it and I was like it's time to just go like I need to give this life up y'all it was rough I've been through some things but yeah when I found out that like she had told them even though it was embarrassing, it also confirmed for me there was a traitor in my midst. And the whole time it was her. And I never knew that she was the one betraying me. Next week, we'll have to get into the role play store and the fake it till you make it. And I can tell everything about her. But I did not know she was betraying me, long story short. And um, yeah, she was dirty. She was foul. But we will pick that up again next week. I will make sure to add a note to finally talk about the like do's and don'ts of role play. A helpful guide. I don't even know if people still do that. I mean, I kind of would assume they do. So, I mean, they were doing it when I was a kid. I mean, and it ain't like I done stopped doing it for so long. It's been about like two years. I don't know, y'all. That that's a thought for myself. I don't know. I might even cut that out. But I don't know. I don't know what the kids these days are doing. They may be doing it. But the last thing we're gonna talk about before we wrap 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 wrap, wrap it up before we wrap wrap, wrap it up before we hey always wrap it up. Anywho, um, my husbands, my anime husbands. The first one is Kakashi Hatake. Listen. I've been in love with that man ever since Naruto first started, all right? He was one of the first ones that was a hard thought for me. I was like, you can be sensei anytime. He ain't ever did no wrong to me. Sometimes he do make me a little mad with, like, his logic, but knowing God that I know about him now, I am okay with it. I accept it. I love that they never changed his character style either. Like, the one cover face, yes. The hair, yes. All of it, I loved it. Like, Kakashi, that's the man, okay? He... Kashi, he, he really does like melt my little heart. Um, Biaki Akushki. Now listen, this one, he's kind of like Nozel. Like I hate that I sent for him, but I do send for him because when he cares, he cares. But when he want to be a jerk, he want to be a jerk. And he make life so, so hard. Like you ain't got to treat people like that. You ain't got to treat your sister like that. Like why do you think that 
it is okay for you to act the way that you are acting. I'm not a fan of it. He can get gone. But I do, I do favor him a lot. And my heart just doki doki doki. Okay. I was like, who is this? Ichigo Kurosaki. Now that is another one. Um Ichigo. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. So in Bleach, I, I think the problem I have with Bleach is like whenever I try to simp or have a husband, though, they always got off. Like who was the captain with the number, what, eight or nine on his face? And I was in love with him. Like I was going to rock it out with him to the end. Then they offed homeboy and I was like, y'all dirty. Like all y'all are dirty because y'all don't ever kill the people who need to be killed. Like Isaac is out here roaming the streets being free and you just going to chop off my baby like, oh, Ooh, ooh, it's a thing so anywho's Ichigo he replaced my love and I mean Ichigo, I just I have a soft spot for the heroines man like he worked so hard to get there he fought so hard for his friends like he helped the soul society out when they didn't want nothing from him and they treated him like a reject like trying to execute him and Rukia for nothing in this world and Rukia low-key stresses me out too because if you know you like Ichigo just say you like Ichigo but I want him with Orihime because that is just how it should be and Rukia can go with the redhead one that she been dealing with all her life and everybody can just be happy or Ichigo could just come home and I'll receive him with warm arms but yes even when he's hollow form I'm like mess it up now I have not seen the new one bleach yet I started it but I was like it's gonna take me some more time before I get into this um Gojo Gojo Satoru I hate that I love him, but it's kind of a love that just won't go away. He vexes my heart. And, like, he's so powerful in those eyes. And, like, even when he's on that photo, I'm just like... He, I love his fighting style. I love his infinity. And honestly, I do love how he like supports Yuji and like tries to keep him safe. Like he is such a caring person. I really hate what hap what is happening between him and his ex-friend. Like, no, I seen the preview. I hope he demolishes Koji because you have no rights for that worm. You still got no rights for that worm. And Tengen from um, Tengen from Demon Slayer. He is my heartthrob that I don't want to love either because he got three wives and I'm just like I would not even get half of your attention and this makes me mad that I find you so beautiful and it's not even that you're just beautiful it's the way you fight for your girls how you fought for your friend and his friend is the one that I sent for too and I, that's just kind of bad but I sent for the friend and I sent for his dad. I hold on judo hi oh judo love him love him to the moon and back he can do no wrong i hate it when they killed him i was so bitter in that episode i cried as if i cried like i was watching a great ninja war on naruto again it broke me down i am just not okay his brother better grow up be happy get married and be protected always or they gonna hear from me okay now the last one Mm. I was like, I am not going to tell people about this, but I'm, I'm going to let it be known. Do, have y'all ever seen that show, um, The Return from Neverland? Neverland. So The Return from Neverland is a anime about these kids trying to escape this place because, like, they basically find out kids are not being sent to these orphanages. Kids are being off and killed, and it's just a thing. And so they're trying to leave. Now, there is this demon that ends up helping them get out, like, through the forest or whatever and find freedom. And I do not even know why I let my lips utter that he is a bias of mine in the anime world or anime husband. But he very much is. And I'm like, this is why the Lord is like, you cannot be around certain people because you do not know how to control yourself. Because I would have been like, sir, you can use my blood for whatever you need, for whatever you want. I ain't got to go. I ain't got to go. Let me stay here. Let me grow up to be an adult. Let me show you I can be a bag of blood. Like, I am here for it. But yes, that is another one that I 
and I don't even remember his name and I'm gonna I know I'm gonna include it but I was like yeah I don't even want to look him up until it's time to talk about him because I don't want to be set back into that because I I felt for him hard and I don't even understand how to make that right I it just, it's just like Tomaru. I don't know how to make it right, but it was just something that I ended up loving. So yeah, y'all kind of got to deal with it too. But thank you so much, babes, for listening to me, for hanging out with me, for rocking with me. Bullet points this week is one, cover up your dreams. Don't share your dreams with everybody on a serious note because not everybody, I know you want to love on people. You want to believe that everybody is great. You want to believe that like happiness exists in this world, which it does, but just not every person needs to know like about you and your dreams. People can be very toxic. That's number two. And like they can say things to you and like try to downplay you and your dreams based off of things that happened to them in their lives. But it's your story. So fight your fight and keep going. Which leads me to number three, be careful who you take counsel from. You know, I always call it like wild, wise counsel. So be careful who you let in your ear, just about anything in your life, anything pertaining to anything you want to chase and pursue. And number four, Get you some anime husbands to simp on, okay? Sure, they're not real. And sure, they may do things that disappoint you. But you can have satisfaction knowing that they exist in your mind while you watch this show. And they make it a little bit better. Just, just a, little, a little piece of heaven, all right? <laughs> if you guys did enjoy, please make sure to kiss me with that like button. Please subscribe and comment which woman of the week you want to talk to me about or want me to talk about. Please comment um, our diary entry for this week is tell me about a time you revealed your vulnerability to somebody and it backfired on you. You comment down below. I will read it and respond back to you. And yeah, just talk to you about whatever it is that you want to talk about i love talking to people i really hope that like people start talking to me because i just want to give my love to people and things like that um please don't forget you can check out my youtube for other content such as face painting videos and i have a drawing series that i'm gonna start back up soon but yes you guys i love you remember always the lord loves you may he bless and keep you um and I hope wherever you are in this part of the world, whether it be day or night, you have such an amazing, incredible day or such an amazing, incredible night. Goodbye, guys.